Right now, on To The Point. After tens of millions of dollars stolen from those who need it most, the state rolls out a new app to help keep information and money safe for those who get EBT benefits. I think it's a good thing. I think it's pretty um, proactive of them to do. How those impacted are reacting. In an interview you'll only see on ABC 10, Flannery Associates CEO is laying out the next steps for the proposed new city in Solano County after a contentious meeting with the residents. And tonight on the back roads, we head to Amador County to ride historic railroad tracks on pedal powered rail bikes. Good evening, this is To The Point, I'm Alex Bell. Thieves are stealing tens of millions of dollars from those who need it most. For months now, we've been reporting on EBT benefits theft because we stand for you by getting to the bottom of this. Tonight, we have some news about one solution to the problem. Becca Hobbegger shows us how the state is working to protect people's information and much needed money. This is baby Ace. I've been approached many times by people saying my baby looks like the Gerber baby. Larry Peters has four kids, including Ace, and relies on EBT benefits to feed his family and provide for their needs, but says on three separate occasions he has had his EBT benefits stolen right off his card, with the third time being the hardest. I felt terrible because at the time I was, like I said, I was having a hardship and I had to borrow money from people and go through other means, use credit. Larry is hardly alone. This was the line outside the Sacramento County Department of Human Assistance last week. People waiting to report missing benefits. Without this money, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to buy the most basic necessities. The California Department of Social Services says counties which administer these benefits have two weeks to reimburse victims of theft. We're talking about Californians who rely on CalFresh, sometimes referred to as food stamps, to feed themselves and their families, and CalWorks or Cash Aid for families to pay rent and other necessities. I was just like, I got robbed virtually. <laughs> Nina works for a school district and gets benefits over the summer. She asked that we just use her first name because she says thieves stole nearly $900 from her in September. It started making me think about like all the places that I use my card. So I figured maybe it was one of those stores, um, you know, when I slid it and it picked it up there. So I'm kind of selective where I use it now. The Department of Social Services is working on solutions. On Friday, for example, the state launched a new mobile app and online portal called EBT Edge. It lets cardholders freeze their card when it's not in use, block all online and out of state transactions, change their PIN number and request a replacement card. I think it's a good thing. I think it's pretty proactive of them to do. However, I feel like with anything that's monitored by people or systems, I feel like anything can be compromised. The state provided us data from July of 2021 through March of 2023. During those 21 months, thieves stole more than $86 million, with the amount of monthly theft trending upward. And Becca Habecker joins us now. Becca, I do want to mention the state has another security feature coming next year. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, that's really good to mention. They, they plan on launching chip technology in their EBT cards. Currently, all EBT cards just have that magnetic stripe. Mm -hmm. uh, they also say they're working with law enforcement to fight theft. They've made some arrests and have open investigations. But, you know, Alex, as you know, we're hearing from people who say they don't think thieves got their card through physical skimming because it's a new card they haven't used and they're still getting robbed, for example. You know, you're diving more into that. Yeah, exactly, Becca. So we've been looking closer at some of the tactics that the thieves are using, how the state is trying to stop and prevent these thefts, and also the trends that they're seeing. So it is an issue that we are still uncovering. Becca, thank you so much. All right, time is ticking to pass a bill to fund benefits for thousands of federal firefighters. The Wildland Firefighter Protect Act is waiting to be signed by Congress. They estimate it would, it, they estimate it would make a temporary pay raise permanent for more than 17,000 federal firefighters nationwide. We have to do more to deal with these fires. And job one is making sure that we don't lose up to 50% of our federal wire fi firefighters by cutting their pay. Uh, and that's exactly what some in Congress are proposing. They think somehow it's going to save us money uh, firing this many firefighters. I think exactly the opposite. Right now, the House has a deadline to sign the bill by next Friday, November 17th. Sacramento County Sheriff Jim Cooper is calling out the California Retailers Association. It comes just a day after he called out retail giants Target and Walgreens, accusing them of allowing retail theft. So take a look at this tweet that he posted today directed at the CRA president. Cooper says in part, quote, Rachel, I've been trying to work with your organization long before you were even there. 
you work for an organization that represents big box retailers in the legislature. You claim you have done more to combat retail theft than anyone else. The public can clearly see the problem has gotten worse, not better. Stop kidding yourself. You and the CRA do not set policies for these corporate giants. So let's go ahead and bring in Chris Thomas, who covered this story last night. Chris, less than 24 hours ago, you spoke with the CRA president. What does she have to say about these retail theft issues? Well, first of all, a lot of folks have called these fighting words, oh, right? Yeah. They're not <laughs> mincing any words, to say the least. And the president says they've actually been fighting retail theft for years. And just last month, working with the governor, they announced millions of dollars in new funding. I want to reassure everyone, retailers across the state of California are doing everything they can to try to combat retail theft. In fact, it was the California Retailers Association that secured over $300 million in local law enforcement grants, of which the Sacramento Sheriff's Department received $9.4 million that they just received last month. So we are working all angles to try to get solutions to this problem. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Alex, she says they have even more plans for next year, and that would get all of us involved. We'll have more of that coming up tonight at 11. Chris, thank you so much. And I do want to mention that this is an issue that we're seeing in many areas across our state, and they're really facing this. I recently covered how Roseville police are working with local businesses to fight retail theft. So you can watch that story in its entirety right now on abc10.com slash to the point. Chris, thank you. Coming up on To The Point, federal officials continue to investigate suspicious letters sent to election offices. What was found inside? Temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s today. A nice weekend ahead as well, but big changes. Coming to the forecast, we'll talk more about those coming up. And later, we hit the back roads in Amador County. We're on Rail Explorers, custom-designed rail bikes, railroad commercial-grade equipment. So typically right now we talk about what it felt like outside. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it felt like outside. I was <laughs> inside, inside all day. <laughs> well, it was a great day. We saw temperatures in the upper 60s, low 70s out there, and it was partly sunny. So nice to get those beautiful sunsets and you have a few clouds in and out of the area as well. But you are now looking at a weather headline graphic here with rain on it. And yes, we're looking at the potential for heavy rain and even snow into next week. So enjoy the beautiful Veterans Day weekend as we'll see temperatures near 70 degrees this weekend with a mix of sun and clouds. Gorgeous out there. Get things done though too. Get rid of the leaves maybe. Clear out those gutters to get ready for that rain. Colder temperatures also arrive next week. Now we're currently looking at a zonal flow. That means the jet streams are straight across there, keeping the temperatures pretty much the same for the next three days. Then we'll see a dip in that jet stream, allowing for cold air from the north to start moving in but also bringing in a storm system that'll sit offshore for just a while longer. Partly cloudy skies currently and into the weekend. And here's that storm system we're talking about pausing just out there over the Pacific 9 a.m. Tuesday. Maybe a little bit of that brushing up against coastline, but then it kind of stalls out a little while longer into Wednesday until finally we see some scattered showers moving into the area. Now, the storm system originally as of yesterday looked to be pretty big. Right now, it's not showing us much in terms of heavy rain and snow, but everything is changing literally day by day as we start seeing all of these new computer models coming out with what they think this low pressure is expected to do. And that means the numbers when it comes to rain is all over the place as well. Anywhere from even a quarter inch to one and a half inches of rain to one to three inches near Grass Valley. And that's the same for snow, six inches to maybe even two feet of snow. So yes, varying and we're still very far away from seeing those numbers actually coming in and better prediction models coming through. Upper 60s and low 70s out there. And we'll see that 10-day forecast bring us near 70 for the weekend with those mid-60s to low 60s moving into next week. Al. All right, thanks, Carly. Next, we meet with Plannery Associates CEO on the land of their new city, how they plan to move forward after some setbacks in public meetings. Well, it's the most controversial conversation in Solano County. The group Flannery Associates is proposing a 52,000 acre city they're calling California forever. After being turned away in two different meetings, ABC 10's Devin Truvy spoke with the CEO about next steps. It's a decision you'll only hear on ABC 10. On Thursday night, the Solano County Water Agency decided not to accept Flannery Associates money and partnership in studying the expansion of the North Bay Aqueduct for their proposed city, California Forever. 
Founder and CEO Jan Schrammick telling ABC 10 exclusively they're dropping the idea of using the aqueduct completely. Unless the agency decides that they would like to pursue it and, um, and they ask us to do it, we'll be just looking at other options. However, Schrammick says the company's thoughts on public interest in the project remain unchanged despite the number of people lined up to say California Forever doesn't represent the diversity of the community. I think that there are people who don't like development at all, and they've been fighting development in the county for a long time. Um, and they've weaponized this idea of Travis, and they've weaponized this idea of water, and they've tried to weaponize this idea of everything else to be against the project. They had no issues when lots of people were buying land next to Travis for the last 20 years. Which is why California Forever has created a 21-person advisory committee to hear directly from their experts to get feedback. Members include the Solano County Sheriff, retired Travis Air Force Base Airmen, and residents from each part of the county. They're also relying on the survey sent to all registered voters in Solano County. The results aren't out yet, but Schrammack revealed some of the early findings exclusively to ABC 10 from the thousands of responses. There's way more people who support the project than there are opponents. Um, and we're beginning to see a, a, a list of priorities of what people care about and jobs uh, and um, homes, kind of homes in walkable safe neighborhoods are definitely the top two. Why there was not a question on the survey, are you in favor of a new city, yes or no? Uh, because we've already asked a question before. Some people have kind of accused us of only asking questions that are in favor of the project. We've asked three open-ended questions. California Forever is moving forward, sharing these new renderings showcasing windmills for renewable energy, soccer fields, bike paths, and water access for recreation. After hearing public opposition, both in public comment and meetings, and maybe some in the survey, is there anything that would make Flannery and Associates walk away from this project? No. The next steps include a series of town halls that will be held in various parts of the county. The official plans for where everything will be located in will be revealed in January. Emergency room wait times are a growing crisis in Sacramento County. Officials say that the, for the last 12 months, the average wait time for patients to get from the ambulance to an ER bed across hospitals was 69 minutes, peaking at about an hour and 24 minutes in December. That's well above the national average of 25 minutes and California's average of 40 minutes. Paramedics say that the pandemic accelerated the problem. Population growth is exploding in, in Sacramento County. Um, and then just a, 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 a lot of folks that just don't have access to primary care. The state is getting involved. Assembly Bill 40 requires every local EMS agency by July of next year to create a plan that gets offload times to 30 minutes. Tonight, new details in the FBI's growing investigation into a batch of suspicious envelopes sent to election facilities in at least five states, including right here in Sacramento. Officials have confirmed that some of them contained fentanyl. Melissa Don has the latest. The FBI is trying to find out who was responsible for sending suspicious envelopes to several election offices across the country. At least five states, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, and Georgia, reporting that letters inside white envelopes were discovered with the white powdery substance. The FBI says at least four envelopes tested positive for the potentially deadly substance fentanyl, while in other envelopes, baking powder was detected. This was an attempt not only to terrorize the people that work in this building, but also to disrupt the democratic process, and that's reprehensible on so many levels. In Oregon, election officials temporarily halted the ballot counting amid the discovery. State officials in Nevada and California say their election offices also intercepted a suspicious letter. One headed to the Sacramento County Department of Voter Registration and Elections following the batch sent to Georgia and Washington State. We're going into a presidential election. Uh, things are only going to get crazy or possibly, hopefully not. ABC News obtaining a copy of one of the letters calling to quote, end elections now. We are in charge now and there is no more need for them. In Georgia, officials equipping election workers with Narcan as authorities work to intercept the suspicious envelope addressed to Fulton County. There are some crazy people out there who will go to any extreme to disrupt, interrupt, fair, open, transparent elections in our country. No one has been injured from the envelopes and the FBI and U.S. Postal Inspection Service are investigating whether the letters originated from the same source or if it was a coordinated effort. 
We are shining the spotlight on local veterans who sacrificed in service for our country. Every veteran has a story of their military past, and for Elk Grove native Jordan Stevenson, an injury changed the course of his life. He worked with special forces and was deployed with the Army Rangers in Afghanistan when he was hurt. An enemy target came out with his holding his wife as a shield in front of him and opened fire on me with an AK-47. Subsequently, the bullet went through my helmet, right above my left eye, all the way through my head and out through the back of my helmet. So doctors told him he'd never walk again, but Jordan proved them wrong by not only is he walking and talking, but biking with a prosthetic leg and giving motivational speeches to other veterans with shared experiences. Next on to the, to, um, to the point, a trip to the back roads to see the historic railroad tracks of Amador County. Buckle up, it's time to hit the back roads tonight. John Bartell takes us to Amador County to ride historic railroad tracks on pedaled powered rail bikes. The old Amador Central Railroad once transported lumber and supplies to gold mining communities in the Sierra foothills with large steam powered locomotives. Today though, the Amador Central Railroad primarily transports tourists on these rail riding bicycles. We're on Rail Explorers, custom designed rail bikes, railroad commercial grade equipment. Rail Explorers are new to Amador County. My tour guide Heather Abel says the company started in the fall of 2023. These pedal powered bikes start just outside the city of Ione and take you through a mix of green scrub oak and the rolling hills of gold country. We're gonna do about eight miles total. That seems like a lot of leg work. Well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop pedaling and turn the motor off and go ahead and pedal. Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> Those hills that I mentioned get steep. For all you railroad enthusiasts, the track sometimes climbs up to a 4% grade. Lucky for riders, though, the rail bikes are equipped with electric motors to assist you up the hill. But just to be clear, it's not an effortless ride. I don't just get the motor running and then kick back and relax. It's assisting me pedaling, which means I have to continuously pedal. Once you pass the three traffic crossings, you'll start to pick up some speed and the click clack of the old steel railroad will give you a sense of what it was like when the locomotives ran through this area. This is the Amador Central Railroad. It was originally the Ione and Eastern, so it's been around since 1904. Are we gonna run into any uh, locomotives today? Absolutely not. The track is not being used by locomotives or the speeders. Rail bikes are not actually a new invention. A version of these rail bikes have been around since the 1800s. Back then, they were called hand cars. In the 1800s, um, there was rail bikes and they were mostly just used for service, right? So people needed to get out to their the gold mine. As you gradually climb the hills, you'll cross over a bridge that intersects with Highway 88. From here, the green forests fade and the golden hills open up. We're going to run through a lot of private property. The views are spectacular. While on the tracks, keep an eye out for grazing cattle and horses. They get up close to the tracks, but Heather assures me that the cows can't keep up with the rail bikes. The speed limit on this track is 15 miles an hour. The Amador Central Railroad is not a loop, so when you reach the end of the line, the bikes must be turned around on these battery-powered rail bike lifts, so you don't have to ride backwards. Little lazy Susan for rail bikes or something. <laughs> well, I don't like the word lazy when you're talking about my crew. <laughs> the ride home is much faster than the ride up. <laughs> rail bikes are a unique way to see Amador County. The bikes take very little effort, and pretty much anyone can ride them. We bring out paraplegic folks and put them, you know, so they get to experience the speed, the railroad, the pedaling if they can. In all, the ride is about two hours long, just enough to get a cell phone full of selfies and a mild workout. From Rail Explorers on the historic Amador track, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. 
Now that looks like fun. And make sure that you reach out to John if you have a great road trip destination. You can always text us at 916-321-3310. And let us know what's going on in your community. You can send me and the team an email at point at abc10.com. Have a good night and a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.